Hello and welcome to the deep dive session on self supervised learning. If you are new to AWS or want to enhance your skill on AWS AI services, this session is for you. This video is part of the AWS certified AI ML bootcamp series. On behalf of the Cloud Expert Solution team, I would like to thank you for joining us and exploring this video. In recent AWS AI practitioner exam, we have noticed one to two questions on self-supervised learning. While we have already covered supervised, unsupervised, semi-supervised and reinforcement learning in depth, this topic is becoming increasingly important. To help you stay prepared, we created this video to explain self-supervised learning and why it matters. While semi-supervised and self-supervised learning may sound similar, they are actually very different techniques in machine learning. Let's break down self-supervised learning, its key concepts, importance, and real-world use cases. We have reviewed supervised learning. In supervised learning, we have labeled data and the images are labeled. Then we are using this training data set to train our machine learning model. Post training, if you are presenting test data to the model, the model will predict the output and it will give the outcome. On the other hand, for unsupervised learning, we have pool of unlabeled data. When you'll feed this unlabeled data to machine learning model, the machine learning model will interpret and process the data. From there, it will extract feature. Then it will categorize those image based on this feature and it will generate output. However, for fields like healthcare and genomics involve high dimensional data. That is for medical images, DNA sequences, electronic health records, access to label data is very limited. That means the learning a performant model is much harder with risk of overfitting the limited quality of data available. Hence, gathering a large label data set can be time consuming and expensive. On the other hand, human annotation or labeling medical data with human that is annoting tumors in MRI scans or identify gene mutations require domain expertise and it is time consuming. Unsupervised learning that is clustering or dimensionality reduction focuses on finding patterns in data without any task specific guidance. In healthcare, we often need models to perform specific tasks that is classify a tumor as benign or malignant, which unsupervised learning cannot directly address. There is also no ground truth for evaluation that is unsupervised learning does not provide a way to evaluate how well the learned representations aligned with real world task. And last but not least, there are limited generalizations in unsupervised learning. That means unsupervised learning may not generalize well to new unseen data, especially in healthcare where data distribution can vary widely. Now from this, we can understand that supervised learning and unsupervised learning while solves many problems, but for some domains like healthcare and genomics, we cannot use supervised learning nor unsupervised learning. In those use cases, self-supervised learning bridges the gap between unsupervised learning and supervised learning. In self-supervised learning, the model learns from the data itself without requiring manually labeled dataset. Instead, the model generates its own label from the input data, leveraging inherent structures or relationship within the data to create a supervisory signals. In terms of key advantages for self-supervised learning, you will have more time and cost-effective approach compared to a supervised learning because you don't have to label or manually label the data. That will lead to eliminate or reduce the need for manual data labeling. And also it will reduce the reliance on human annotated data sets. Now let's review how self-supervised learning works. The step one in this process is pre-text task, which is unsupervised phase. And here the objective is the model learns 
meaningful representations from the unlabeled data. In terms of input data, we can have unstructured or unlabeled data that is images, text or genomic sequences and then we can create a pre-text task. Create a task where the model predicts part of the data from another part. As an example, if you have image data, you can predict missing patches of an image or rotate an image and predict the correct orientation. If you have text data, you can predict missing words in a sequence. If you have genomic data, you can predict missing nucleotides in a DNA sequence. Once the pre-text task is created, the next step is model training. Then train the model to solve the pre-text task. Then the model learns to extract useful features from the data that is embeddings or latent features. In this pre-text task, the model is trained on auxiliary task with pseudo labels generated from the data that will help the model learn meaningful representations of the data. The next step or step two of the process is downstream task and here the objective is we use the learn representations from previous step for a specific task. Now take the pre-trained model from the pretext task and fine tune it on a similar label data set for a specific task. Here you have the downstream task or the actual task and as an example for healthcare you can classify images that is tumor detection. For genomics you can predict functions or disease risk and for natural language processing you can analyze sentiment or text classifications. Now with the pre-trained model once you have the downstream task it can predict the output for our example we have used image classification for medical use cases and we want to detect tumor that is why our output will be it will categorize the tumor as benign or malignant and now at the end step we can fine tune that model we can adjust the model's parameter to adapt any new task now let's review some real life example and one of the examples could be image impending imagine that you have a photo with a missing or corrupted part like I have in this slide. In self-supervised learning, the model can be trained to predict the missing part of the image. The model will learn to understand the context and structure of image by being trained on many images where parts are intentionally removed and then reconstructed. And as a result, it can redraw the image and it can remove all those corrupted parts from the original image. The other real life example could be natural language processing. Models like BART and GPT uses self-supervised learning to predict missing words in sentences. That helps the model understand language context and semantics, which is crucial for tasks like translation, summarization, and sentiment analysis. Another one example could be speech recognition. Facebook's web to vec is a self-supervised algorithm that learns to recognize speech by predicting missing parts of audio signals. Now let's review some use cases. The first one could be medical imaging. Self-supervised learning can pre-train models on large unlabeled datasets of medical images that is X-rays, MRIs to learn general features. Then the model can be fine-tuned for specific tasks like detecting tumor or classifying diseases. For genomic sequencing, self-supervised learning can predict missing parts of DNA sequences or infer gene functions from unlabeled genomic data. This is very useful for tasks like identifying disease causing mutations or understanding gene regulations. For electronic health records or EHR use cases, self-supervised learning can learn representations from unstructured EHR data that is patient note, lab results to predict patient outcomes or recommend treatments. Last but not least, drug discovery. 
सेल्फ सुपरवाइज लार्निंग कैन एनालाइज मॉलिकुलर स्ट्राक्चार्स एंड प्रेडिक्ट ड्रग टार्गेट इंटरक्शन हुईच उल एक्सिलेट द डिसकवरि अफ निव थेरपिस प्लिज स्टे टीउंड एंड एक्सप्लोर आदार मड्यूल फ्रम द बुट कैम प्ले लिस्ट फर ए कम्प्रिहेंसिव अंडारस्टैंडिंग अब द टपिक्स रिक्वयार्ड फर द सार्टिफिकेशन दैट रैप्स अफ दिस मड्यूल इफ यू फाउंड दिस भिडियो हेल्पफुल प्लिज गिव इट ए थम्स अप सबसक्राइब फर मोर आपडेट एंड फील फ्री टू ड्रप एनी कोश्चन और फिडबैक इन द कमेंट्स वी उड लाव टू हियर फ्रम यू I hope this session helped you gain a deeper understanding and brought you one step closer to your learning goals. Thank you very much for watching and learning with us at Cloud Expert Solution. See you in the next module.